name is Lydia Parnas. I co-chair the Privacy and Cybersecurity Practice at Wilson Sonsini. I also had the honor of serving as the Director of the Bureau of Consumer Protection during Debbie's tenure as FTC Chairman. When Debbie came to the FTC, she was already a recognized rock star in the antitrust world. Consumer protection, eh, not so much. But Debbie is by far the most focused, diligent person I know. And before long, she was making a significant impact in the consumer protection world as well. Her vision and leadership touched every facet of BCP. Here's just one example. Debbie staked her ground in the policy debate on childhood obesity, an issue the agency had been trying to address for years. She urged the players to stop placing blame and start solving problems. And the market listened to her, the self-regulatory program responsible for overseeing significant improvements in all facets of food advertising to kids is still going strong. But beyond all of this, Debbie is a wonderful, caring person. In addition to her stellar work, Debbie focused on the people of the commission. Her team meant the world to her, and she let us know that in ways large and small. Inconceivably, we lost two beloved members of the chairman's staff, Martha Schoenberg and Sally McGee killed by a Metro bus as they left the FTC building on the evening of Valentine's Day in 2007. Though Debbie was most impacted by this tragedy, she got us all through this, everyone in grieving and in always remembering Martha and Sally. Okay, I would also be remiss if I didn't mention Debbie's shoes. The very first time we met, she had broken her foot and was wearing a very clunky boot on one foot and a fabulous three-inch heel on the other. That's Debbie, a woman of impeccable character, impressive leadership, and great style. Debbie, I love you and miss you and join everyone here in congratulating you on this well-deserved honor. Hello, I'm Maureen Olhausen, former commissioner and acting chairman at the Federal Trade Commission, and now the co-chair of the competition group at Baker Botts. And I'm delighted to join with ABA Women Connected to honor Debbie Majoris and her induction into the Hall of Feminism. I first met Debbie when she came to the Federal Trade Commission as the chairman, and I was the acting head of the Office of Policy Planning at the time, and I didn't really know Debbie but she gave me a wonderful opportunity to head the office and to work with her. And I learned so much from that time, her antitrust knowledge and her great intelligence and integrity were great inspirations and a wonderful role model as I moved forward and ended up uh, also being in a leadership role at the Federal Trade Commission. And Debbie's also been a wonderful and friend and mentor to me over the years. And I've often turned to Debbie when I've had to make a big career decision because not only does she have intelligence and integrity, Debbie has wonderful judgment too. So congratulations to Debbie. I'm delighted to be part of this celebration. Hi, my name is Tara Hogan Charles and I'm a Senior Director of Government Relations and Public Policy at Procter & Gamble. I've had the privilege of knowing Debbie since 2008 when she first started at P&G. Over these 12 years, I've watched Debbie navigate our company through CEO transitions, a massive proxy contest, economic downturns, geopolitical unrest, and now a global pandemic and calls for racial and social justice around the world. And there are two things I admire most about Debbie as I've watched her address these challenges. The first is her grace. Debbie is calm no matter what is going on. If the building is on fire, Debbie will show you the closest exit. She is thoughtful, a good listener, and cuts through the noise to get to the right answer. The second thing I admire about Debbie is her authenticity. Debbie has proved to me that you don't have to pretend to be someone else to be successful. The Debbie that you see addressing our entire company is the same Debbie that you get when you sit down to have a glass of wine. Debbie is unapologetically a leader who knows her stuff, but also appreciates a great outfit 
and is not afraid of showing emotion in front of hundreds of people. As a woman, I find that incredibly empowering. So congratulations, Debbie, for your induction into the Hall of Feminism. It is so well-deserved. This honor is special because there is no greater reward than the knowledge that we have positively influenced and inspired others. The easiest question I ever get is, what do you view as the greatest accomplishment in your career? And the answer is clear. It's the success and fulfillment of the women and men on the teams that I've been fortunate enough to lead. I'm still learning, really. Effective leadership requires us to stay in a state of humility and constant learning. And for me, doing so shattered old myths about leadership. First, it's not about control. It's about influence. It's not about who must report to you, but about who wants to be on your team. And second, it's not about me. It's about them. How do I develop and inspire each unique individual to be the best she can be? On control, we all have succeeded because we're really good at doing. And so our comfort zone, especially in challenging situations, is to do it all, control it. And that instinct is further fed by the perfectionism that I, among many other women, dangerously developed over time as we convinced ourselves that we had to be perfect to succeed. Not only is it impossible, I mean, who could be perfect? It's ultimately debilitating. So I am a recovering control freak perfectionist, meaning that I continually work to liberate myself from it, which frees me from fearing mistakes and allows me then to take smart risks, sometimes screw up, own it, learn more, and move on gracefully. But it also moved me away from the temptation of being a perfectionist critic of others to being a developer supporter of others. We've become such a society of critics, but it is so much more productive and satisfying to have empathy and show grace when problems or disagreements arise. Most importantly, liberating ourselves from perfectionism and the need for control sets the example that enables our teams to do the same. The last eight months are driving us to reevaluate our own impact and how we want to live. A friend recently said, it's as though we've been holding our breath waiting for a return to normal, but we just have to let out that breath and get on with it. Yes, let's seize the moment. It's disheartening to see the news that women are being disproportionately negatively affected by the pandemic, even more so women of color. Many might leave the workplace, but remember, women have, decade by decade, been gaining in power and influence in the workplace. What we once took as a given, developed largely by men who didn't have to worry about life balance, is now ours too. So this is a great time to rethink workplaces. Do they enable or provide constraints? Life balance, it's right there in front of us as never before. And wellness for ourselves and those around us. Our profession, forgive me, sucks at wellness and life balance, but this is an opportunity. We're not super women, but we are jugglers. And we can show our profession and the world how we can be on balance, not every minute of every day, impactful at what we do at work and at home, as long as we have flexibility and support. If we commit to making progress, we might just be able to help women whose daily struggles are immense and yet go unheard. I learned something cool recently when Joey Hubbard from Thrive Global talked to my global team about coping with stress during this extraordinary time. He advised us to take time each day to think about the things for which we are grateful. Because research shows that gratitude is such a positive state of mind that the brain cannot process negative thoughts when we're feeling grateful. And it works. After Jody reached out about this honor, I took the time to think about the tremendous people, especially the women, I've had the opportunity to touch so far on the journey. And I am indeed highly grateful to have been part of their lives. Thank you. Thank you.